Grammar Girl here, I'm Mignon Fogarty, and you can think of me as your friendly guide to the English language, writing, history, rules, and cool stuff. Today, I have a segment about how to use verb tense in your essays, and a listener question about the poop emoji that made me laugh, but that I'll also answer seriously, because that's how we roll. Let's get started. Tupelo Hossman is the author of Gods with a Little G and also teaches composition at Santa Monica College and California State University, East Bay. She uses Grammar Girl in her classroom and shared this advice she gives to students about how to use tense in essays. Tense is almost always an issue, and this is sad. Here's a tissue. What tense should you write in? The answer is mystifying, but it can be absorbed, I promise. Be flexible. You should always write in the past tense when you're speaking of a historical event. That's obvious. You should always write in the present tense when you're speaking of a text, any text. And for many people, this is the tricky part. However, this idea is essential. Whatever is happening in a text is happening forever. The action is never finished. The man and his daughter in American Gothic didn't used to stand together with the pitchfork, right? Because you don't look at the painting and find them gone to the fair. They stand in the painting together. They stand there forever. She never gets married. He never smokes his pipe and looks at the moon. The kiddos on Lost are on the island, unless they're not. We'll talk about that in a minute. And this isn't only because the show is time warped. Alice tumbles down the rabbit hole each time you reach that page, right? The words, images, and sounds found in a text are eternal. What else would explain the healthy ego of the artist high on the drug of creating such infinite gestures? Consider Alice again. If you're presenting an argument about the repressed female psyche in Alice in Wonderland, you might describe the opening scene on the grass in the present tense with statements such as, Alice sits on the grass, its well-manicured ridges representing the restrictions of Victorian life. Or, Alice sees a rabbit in the painful throes of a procrastination addiction, and she follows him down. Alice is always seeing the rabbit. She is always following him, forever and ever, amen. Now for the advanced note on this subject. Put on your thinking cap. While the major rule is to always discuss texts in the present tense, the minor rule is that there is such a thing as the past tense of the text. For example, in a chronological text, if you were referencing an event that takes place on page 213, whatever happened on page 50 would be discussed in the past tense. If you're presenting an argument about Alice's later adventures— Much to her alarm, Alice's body fills up the house, but want to speak to a historical event in the novel, you would employ the past tense. Much to her alarm, Alice's body fills up the whole house in a way never imagined, past tense, back on the grassy knoll. In a text that jumps around chronologically, you have to speak to the text's present moment in the present and everything else in the past. And if you want to dive deeper into that special circle of hell, please review episodes of Lost, any version of Doctor Who, or Ask Hermione. Super Jeopardy comes when we discuss a text that references a historical event. You'll have to be clear which, the text or the history, you're referencing. And if you're referencing the history, you'll still need a source to cite unless the information you shared is considered common knowledge. And share that clarity with your audience. Thanks again to Tupelo Hossman for sharing that insight on how to use tense when writing about literature, TV shows, or other stories. Before we get to a listener's emoji question, today we're sponsored by Cove. Cove is on a mission to make migraines less of a headache. You start by completing an online consultation. From there, a doctor reviews your symptoms and determines the best course of treatment. Then your personalized medication comes right to your door, and a few weeks after you begin treatment, Cove will reach out to check on how you're feeling. Cove offers a wide array of FDA-approved acute and preventative migraine medications. 
You don't need any insurance, and when you sign up with my special link, you can get your first month free. I actually get migraines, and I know how frustrating and expensive it is to have to drag yourself to a doctor's appointment to rehash all your symptoms. Cove created their process of getting treatment to be easy, comfortable, and designed for you. If you suffer from migraines, the last thing you need is to wait to see a doctor. With Cove, there's finally a way to get the help you need when you need it. And for a limited time, get your first month of medication free. Visit withcove.com slash G-G. That's W-I-T-H-C-O-V-E dot com slash G-G. Next, here's a voicemail question that made me laugh. Hi, I just got a text message that said, Holy, and it had the poop emoticon. And Holy was spelled W-H-O-L-L-Y. And the person who sent it to me, I know English isn't his first language. So I was going to write back, you know, it's really H-O-L-Y, poop emoticon. And then I thought, well, maybe he really means entirely poop emoticon. Is there a rule about holy, um, anyway, it's Emily from the Bronx. Thank you so much. I love your podcast. I was going to answer your question anyway, but it turns out that it's also quite timely because July 17th is World Emoji Day, chosen because July 17th is the date that appears on the calendar emoji. Makes sense. First, we'll talk about the emoji, and then we'll talk about the spelling of holy. The poop emoji is pretty straightforward. It means what it looks like, and people use it both literally and figuratively. It first appeared in Japan in 1997 on a phone from the carrier SoftBank that turned out not to be very popular. It was later included on other platforms and was eventually added to the Unicode set in 2010. It's pretty popular, although it's not in most lists of top 10 emoji that I could find. And my editor, Karen Hertzberg, told me this fun fact. Along with poop emoji, poop trinkets are also a thing in Japanese culture. The Japanese word for poop is unko, and the word for luck starts with the same un sound. So little poop images and trinkets became associated with good luck in Japan. If you want to know more about emoji, I did a fun interview last year with Jane Solomon, a lexicographer at Dictionary.com, when that site started adding definitions for emoji. You can find it at quickanddirtytips.com by searching for emoji. I thought your call was especially interesting because it's the first example I've heard of an emoji being used in something linguists call an egg corn. I wrote about egg corns a few years ago. The term was coined in 2003 after a discussion on the language log website about a woman who misheard the word acorn, a nut that comes from the oak tree, as egg corn. At the time, there wasn't a name for substituting a similar sounding word or part of a word that also makes logical sense. It's a mistake, a mishearing, but an especially understandable mistake. For example, you could imagine that an egg could grow into a chicken, like the oak nut grows into a tree. Other examples of egg corns include writing toe the line as T-O-W the line instead of T-O-E the line, and saying someone woofs down food instead of wolfs down food. In Emily's example, her friend confused wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, meaning completely, with holy, H-O-L-Y, meaning sacred. But as she noted, it could actually make logical sense either way. It could mean what he probably meant, holy bleep, but it could also mean whole, like completely, poopy, like terrible, completely terrible. Normally, I don't recommend correcting people's grammar, but if you're good friends and can do it in a nice way, I think in this case your friend might appreciate you letting him know that he got it wrong and that the mistake is really interesting. And at least he didn't make the mistake another listener told me about last year. Jennifer wrote that her daughter's second grade teacher told the class that she had been ending all her text messages to close friends and loved ones with the poop emoji because she thought it was a chocolate kiss. Oops. So if you thought it was silly for Dictionary.com to start defining emoji, there's a good counterargument. 
Now we just need people to start actually looking them up so they don't make those kinds of mistakes. Thanks for the question, Emily. I'm Mignon Fogarty, Grammar Girl and author of the New York Times bestseller, Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing. And thanks to my audio producer, Nathan Sems. This show is part of the Quick and Dirty Tips podcast network, so check out some of the other great shows like Nutrition Diva, Get It Done Guy, Get Fit Guy, and more. That's all. Thanks for listening. Bye.